You're standing on the tee with driver in hand and a 20 mile an hour wind at your face. What changes do you make to your swing to mitigate the damage? Today we're outside hitting tee shots into the wind and Thomas is going to show you how it's done. Hey golfers, Drew and Thomas outside today on the driving range at Les Bostec Golf Course and we have a stiff breeze into us today so we figured a tutorial on hitting shots into the wind would be a fitting way to spend the day. And Thomas, you got driver in hand first and so uh, that's the big one because I know especially as someone like me who maybe has kind of a lot of speed, that's when you know getting that, that spin rate a little bit up and maybe that wind can take that ball all sorts of different directions. So golfers need some help with these shots. So uh, where do we start there? Well, first off, you mentioned the word spin rate. Yeah. Spin rate is your worst enemy when it comes to wind. Yeah. If you're high, you have a lot of spin on the driver, there's a good chance the ball is going to be really, really affected. The wind is not going to change the spin rate on the ball, but the wind will influence, if you have a high spin, how far that ball will go. If you have a lower spin, how that, how that ball will dive out of the sky. Sure, yeah. and uh, the nice thing is that today we can hit a couple of shots just standard tee shots that you, with your normal swing. And then with TrackMan, we can turn that normalization on and off. We can show the effect of really a wind, what does it say, 20 miles an hour close to today. Yep. Um, and then we can, from there, Thomas will show you some tips that he has maybe with driver swings to reduce the impact of that wind. And I think golfers will learn a lot because again, playing in the Midwest around here too, a lot of our viewers and our customers are in this Midwest area, uh, play in a lot of windy conditions. Yeah, I think that's a good plan. I, li I like the normalization versus mm -hmm. on versus off. We can find out, get a good baseline, and then we can test to see how much further the ball goes or how much shorter the ball goes if we start hitting into the wind with a normal trajectory versus trying to hit a knockdown shot. Sure, let's do it. I lost it. It's a little left. Hit it fairly decent, but it's a little left. All right, well, Thomas, I think one thing I noticed right away is just simply the dispersion in the circle because you're hitting into a pretty stiff breeze and I can already see how much more difficult it is to hit the ball straight knowing you hit the ball pretty darn straight with driver most of the time and you've got, you know, your, your dispersion here, you got two left and one right and they're not that close to center compared to what you're used to doing. <laughs> right. So uh, I can already see that there's a pretty big impact here. So I'm already going to say this. Practicing, if you if you can hit directly into the wind, you'll become a very, very good ball striker. Because yeah. you'll learn how to hit the ball very straight with not much side spin on the ball. Right. right. But even still, this wind's swirling around a little bit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's coming a little off the right, sometimes it's coming a little off the left, and that wind is really influencing that direction. Right. So I wanted to bring up, I got the map on the left, I've got the numbers on the right for your, those three shots. And I'm gonna kind of just toggle with normalization here. So uh, the average of the three, uh, average of 2,092 spin, which is about your range, right yep. around 2,000, maybe a little bit less. Uh, the average carry was 245, total 258. <laughs> uh, and if you've watched the channel, you know that is not Thomas Campbell numbers. That's probably a good 50 plus yards short of what he can usually do. Uh, of course, I turn that normalization on and you can see that difference. 291 carry, 313 total average. So we're talking about, again, 50 plus yards of difference in both carry and total distance. And then we also can, can look at, uh, I think it was landing angle is another item that we wanted to see. So that landing angle jumps up from 40.3 to 51.3. Uh, so that's 11 degrees of difference in the landing angle. And then uh, was it the spin we also want to touch on? No, the height, excuse me, height was the other one that uh, is tracked. And yeah. height goes from 143 to 127, so 16 feet there. Yeah, and I'm always looking for about 35 to 40 degrees for my landing angle in normal conditions. Yeah. But 50, 51, that's like a pitching wedge coming to a green. Right. Yeah. Right. So these are normal swings now. So let's kind of you know, talk me through then. Obviously, you're not going to swing like that exactly when you're into a wind like this. So. Uh, talk to me about what your approach is. Let's say you've got a tee shot in a tournament that's important. You got to hit it straight. Uh, you got to be in position. What do you What do you do for that one? Yeah, I mean, it it comes down to like, you got to also assess the situation and know if you're playing to a 20 mile an hour, 25 mile wind, you know the ball's not going to go as far. Right. You still got to find a way to get it straight and get yourself in play, and just to minimize any damage or anything yeah. like that. So try and make par. Yeah. Or, or try and make bogey if you're a high if you're a high handicap golfer. Just find a way to get the ball, keep it in play, yeah. keep it in front of you. Right. So sometimes hitting a lower ball flight can be more beneficial. Sure. But also sometimes even just hitting your normal swing, 
you may notice that the bull might go as far, but once again, it's that dispersion yeah. that's going to be the biggest influence. Right, right. And so uh, I know, like, you know, one item we've discussed in the past, maybe he's teeing the ball lower to keep that flight low. So I guess from a, you know, like you mentioned that, that lower flight and how the spin changes. You know, a high spin player will certainly want to spin the ball lower to reduce that impact. You already are a low spin player. So maybe there won't be as big a change for you, but let's say someone does spin the ball a ton, yep. come steep on it with driver. How would you educate them on maybe dealing with this type of wind? Yeah, I mean, choke down on the club a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then try and feel like you're abbreviating the finish. So try and finish here, as opposed to finishing your swing like way up here. Yeah. Because that's going to influence the height of the trajectory as well. Okay. So okay. choke down a little bit, swing a little bit softer, and just know that, hey, I'm hitting straight into the wind. I'm not going to hit at my normal distance with driver but just get the bull in play. Sure, sure. Well, let's do a couple of uh, demonstrations from you, Thomas, here. Just kind of walk through what you do, and then we'll see how the numbers, uh, you know, tell things on track, man. Sounds good. So first thing I do when I'm trying to hit a lo little lower trajectory shot is I would choke down on it a little bit. So normally I grip it pretty far up with driver. I'll choke down on it just a little bit lower. Okay. I won't have the bull as far forward in my stance. So yep. it'll be a little bit further back in my stance. The T height, is a little bit lower here yet too. So I'm not trying to tee this thing really high and yeah. let it fly. I'm trying to just tee this a little lower. I know I'm not gonna hit this as far as I possibly right. could, but I'm just trying to get this in play. Yep. And then the last thing I mentioned, I abbreviate my finish. So when I'm coming through, I'm really trying to finish here. Yeah. As opposed to finishing in a way, way through. Yep. yep. There goes the hat. <laughs> there goes the hat. <laughs> I hit that really good though. And so the funny, the fun thing about that one, Thomas, is that on the map, it is the straightest shot so far. Right. So it's the straightest of the four tee shots you've hit. Now, distance wise, you obviously have adjusted your swing a little bit. You hit it way lower. So your distance, the total of 248, which you didn't lose much total distance. Yeah. Probably five to 10 yards compared to the other ones. Um, I mean, it's funny that you had the normalized shot is still over 300 yards even. <laughs> That's fine. But you just kept that trajectory lower. As it I mentioned- It would have rolled a lot further if Right, I mean, the, the height was yeah. 75 feet with the normalized and 83 without it. So yeah. it's still, the, the wind is still kind of pushing the ball into the air a little bit, but it's still much lower than, you know, 130 something feet that your other tee shots were. Right, we're talking only eight feet of difference versus, I think it was 20 plus. Yeah. What was the difference when I was swinging normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was like perfect shot. That's what I would try and do if I was playing into the wind. I know I'm not gonna hit as far as I possibly could, but if I'm trying to hit the ball straight, I'm trying to keep it in play, that was like perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Thomas, you kind of gave a four step process there for setting yourself up on those tee shots. Um, you know, the first thing you talked about was choking down a little bit. Number two, you kind of brought the ball back a little bit in your stance. You know, normally you have it like off your front foot, maybe bringing it back a little bit. Yep. Uh, number three, you, that tee height was a little bit lower. And then four, you abbreviated your finish. And those four things resulted in a t your straightest tee shot um, of the day here. So uh, talk to me about what you saw in the numbers there and what we discussed. Yeah, I mean, with the abbreviated finish and choking down a little bit, I'm not going to swing quite as fast. I think I was about two miles an hour slower mm -hmm. than my normal swing. And also, with having that ball position a little further back in my stance, my attack angle wasn't as far up. Yeah. Normally, when I'm playing outside, I like to say, tee it high, let it fly. Yeah. But if you do that into the wind, it's going to fly gonna very, very high. It's going to go all over the place. Sure. So, went from six degrees up to two degrees up. So, mm -hmm. I dropped my attack angle by four degrees. You're right. And then you talk about it's kind of interesting with the normalization off versus on pretty similar distance yeah you know, much straighter but even with it uh with the normalization off I actually was pretty close to my normal drive distance right right i mean we even with the normalization on uh you hit it over 300 yards still and then with it off you lost probably five to ten yards and yeah. so and then we talked about at this point when we got the wind like this you're just trying to hit it in play and you hit this the straightest shot of the day here so uh that's kind of a, a nice little uh a set of tips there for golfers that a lot of people face these tee shots every day and wonder what the heck to do. Uh, you got four simple tips here uh, to help with your setup and hitting more accurate tee shots into the wind. So Thomas, thanks for joining today, giving that nice, simple, and easy to digest uh, set of instructions. I think golfers will really like this one and it'll help them shoot better scores. Yep, not a problem.